Hello everybody, welcome. We are here in the Zoo Park in Itatiba in the Natural History Museum. Behind me there is a big dinosaur. Its name is Carcharodontosaurus. And to talk about the Carcharodontosaurus, we have here Camila. Hello Camila. Hello. So Camila, what can you tell us about the Carcharodontosaurus? Very big name, <laughs> it's right? It's a really difficult name, but it's a really amazing animal. It was actually because you know, we don't have dinosaurs like this anymore. He was very, very big. Uh, it could go up to six meters tall, so that's a lot, and 14 meters long. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really big. It lived in the Cretaceous period, so that's around 100, 110 million years ago. It's a really, really long time ago. And now uh, we don't have these big guys anymore. It's a shame, but you know, so we could live. No, somebody had to go. But uh, it actually happens in evolution, so it's fine, but uh, this was a really big carnivore and uh, it has this difficult name Carcharodontosaurus uh, because of the shape of its, its teeth. So the tooth is really big and has a saw in one side. It's similar to a shark teeth. So Carcharodontosaurus, Carcharo, that's shark, donto teeth and sorrows. It's a lizard, a, lizard. <laughs> a big lizard. It's like a lizard with teeth shaped like shark teeth. So it's a little bit different, it's weird, but uh, the teeth were really special. So it wouldn't actually perforate the meat of other animals. It was a carnivore. It actually like saw the meat. So it's rip it apart. It's like messy, but it worked, <laughs> I guess. And uh, you said it didn't live in the Jurassic area. No, it lived in the Cretaceous a little bit later, uh, but it was a time where the dinosaurs dominated the land, so they were the biggest uh, species of animals that existed. So these big guys was, were really, really important and dominated, but uh, most people know the T-Rex because, you know, it's easier to say T-Rex than mm -hmm. Carcharodontosaurus, mm -hmm. but uh, actually the T-Rex was a little bit smaller than this guy. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a little bit tougher, you know, but uh, it's oh. smaller. <laughs> oh, so this one is, was bigger than the T-Rex, you see that? And where did it live? It lived uh, around the forests mm -hmm. and near some areas with swamps. But um, the most thing important about living around near forests it was that uh, it used to just wait for its prey to pass by and then attack with a really big bite. So it was important to have this area where it could hide a little bit and to hide this big thing it was a little bit difficult. Yeah. So <laughs> it's so. easier to live around forests. And did it live in Brazil? Yes, it used to live uh, in South America, not only Brazil, but other countries near here, and also in Africa, because before the continents divide, you know, Africa and Brazil were really close, really tight. And uh, in this period, already the, it was spreading, but you can find some fossils of Carcharodontosaurus in South America and also in Africa. That's very interesting. Thank you very much, Camila. So, do you know any dinosaurs that uh, lived in Brazil too? Okay, you can write about them, make a, make a, a presentation about them, and then send for us. Let's see. We are in another part now of the Natural Museum. And this is a kind of timeline, right, Camila? Yes, uh, here we can talk a little bit about how Earth was formed and how all the life forms existed. So the first life form uh, appeared in the oceans and it was really, really different. It was type of a bacteria and it developed in different life forms as the years went by. So if you think like a timeline, I can spread my arms open and this point in the tip of my, my finger is when Earth was formed around 4.5 billion years ago. And then here uh, near my armpit is where the first life form appeared. So it's a really long time only with volcanoes and, <laughs> and rains and a lot of things a lot of things were going on, but uh, no life. So at this point, life appeared in the oceans and it developed. So we have different life forms uh, that no longer exist here. We have a few animals that uh, lived in the different areas and periods from the past. 
and uh, they are similar to some of the ones that we know today, but not the same. So we have jellyfish-like animals, we have fish, we have amphibians, and all of that, but it's different from what we know now. And how long did it take from this jellyfish to that reptile at the end? <laughs> <laughs> that was a really, really long time, millions and millions of years ago. Uh, first, like it appeared uh, on water, but then it developed and conquered Earth. And at that point, when we have the final of the Paleozoic area, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, so uh, in the end of the area is where it's a really important mark. There was a big extinction and then other groups began to develop and grow like the dinosaurs. So for one species appear, another one has to be extinct. Yeah, that's kind of what happened. So uh, in Till we get that point from the dinosaurs that are so big and everybody knows, we had a lot of extinctions and it's natural to happen. It's not natural uh, when you can accelerate it, like kind of what's happening right now, but uh, in our history, we have a lot of extinctions period. If you think in a total, uh, is that is a point that, a point that we can have around 99% of all the species that ever lived are already extinct. So we only have 1% living and it's a lot. So Yeah, it is. <laughs> so you see, a timeline is a very good way to organize information in a historical period. You can make your timeline about everything. So make your timeline and share with us.